With the upcoming G20 meeting, there seems to be a consensus that there, everybody has to focus on the state of the global economy, the financial debt crisis, and particularly the crisis in the Eurozone. Is there a danger that the developing world is going to, to get left behind you know, because of this overall focus? Of course, the main, uh, the big items in the G20 gathering always is to look at the world economy, the health of the world economy, and uh, the Eurozone, and uh, the debt problem, the trade, all these big issues. Now, if you look at the statements of the G20s in the past, especially the one in 2009 in Pittsburgh, you will find that they paid attention to the, to the interests of developing countries. And one of, the, one of the items they tackled actually is this uh, business of energy for the poor. It was a, a, a very uh, encouraging to see this item part of the G20 statement, which I'm sure is going to, to remain as such. But the Pittsburgh summit was in 2009, and yes, there's the Energy for the Poor initiative. But what has actually been done since 2009? Politically, they have done a lot, I think, and they are contributing also to, uh, to the high-level team, which was formed by Secretary uh, of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon. So you're actually very encouraged about what will happen, hopefully, at the G20 meeting, and then the leaders from the G20 meeting, many of them will then go on to Rio and hopefully come with perhaps more informed uh, decision-making capabilities and, and add to some solutions. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Actually, it's not only the people coming from Rio, it's all people coming from different parts of the world, and they will be following what comes out from, uh, from Mexico, from the G20, because especially, you know, especially it's, it's taking place just a few days before, before Rio. Would you say there's still a huge gap between the developed countries and the developing countries in terms of technology, labor force, and indeed funding? And is there a danger that perhaps that's getting worse? I'm not worried about the political awareness of this problem. Everybody is aware of it. Everybody is, uh, uh, from an ethical point of view, is really willing to do something. With this $1 billion from us, plus you know, what we can leverage from other institutions, we are actually trying to tell the world that you know, these, developing, these poor countries, they need action more than you know, just you know, statements and declarations. Technology, of course, is the center. In the, I mean, if you talk about hospitalization, if you talk about health care, of course you need technology. If you want to, if you talk about education, of course you need technology. Uh, so technology is there, is there. I'm not saying that when you say technology that I'm going to transfer plants or factories from developed countries and put them in Africa. And I'm, no, I'm trying to train people, uh, build capacities, uh, give them the right education, they try to help them. There. This is it. It's going to be a long process, but we should start about it. When you look at the growth in, in, in the world, the growth that's there, you're seeing a huge shift from agricultural-based economies and a huge move into the cities and the growth of urbanization. And with that will come severe social problems as well. What are the difficulties and what are the dangers there of this move and people moving away from um, the agriculture and from the smaller towns into the cities? Well, this is really one of the severe problems which the, I hope the world will pay attention to. I mean, this is very true if you go to the city of Cairo in Egypt, for example, if you go to Caracas, if you go to uh, Manila, if you go to many, many other cities, you'll see people are flooding the cities, the big cities. Uh, migrating from from the the countrysides, and uh, the, the, this is this problem has to be tackled. You know, in Ufid, we are trying to attack this problem with our uh, resources, which is limited, unfortunately, uh, to build the infrastructure uh, outside the cities to help people to settle and and uh, and help them. And as we approach the G20, what is your message to the leaders at the G20? The, the message is that, um, uh, you know, uh, the world has to fly with two wings. You know, the, the, have to pay attention to the problems of developed countries and the world economy, of course, that's impacting everybody. But also, you know, you cannot really uh, forget that, uh, that poverty is still with us. Poverty is why the, 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 the gap is widening between rich and poor, and we have to... Uh, uh, take care of this problem, otherwise we'll, the, the whole world will be insecure.